Okay, I'm going to walk you through the steps of doing a focused echo exam. And there's a couple of different views that you do as part of the focused echo exam. I'm going to concentrate first on the parasternal long axis, and then we'll walk you through the apical four-chamber view as well. The parasternal long axis you can also use as part of your fast examination if you're having trouble doing the subcostal or subxiphoid view. The parasternal long axis is a great alternative to get an overall estimation of function of the left ventricle as part of the fast exam and also evaluate for pericardial effusion. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do with this, if you can, is have the patient turn over to their left side. The reason we like to do this is as you have the patient turn to their left, the heart's going to fall forward in the chest cavity and bring it a little bit closer to the window that you're trying to access through the, the ribs. So in this case, if we're doing a cardiac examination with a cardiac exam type, we want the orientation marker facing up to the patient's right shoulder. So once we have the orientation figured out, we're going to put a little bit of gel on the transducer. And we're going to find where the sternum is. And just move just a little bit left of the sternum, looking for the fourth to sixth intercostal space. And that should put you at least in the ballpark area for where you're going to find the parasternal long axis view of the heart. So remembering that the heart sits in the, in the body at a slight ang angle, this is going to be the long axis view of the heart itself. Not long axis of the body, but we're looking at the long axis of the heart. When we look at the ultrasound image, we should quickly be able to identify the left ventricle, which we he see here and what we're evaluating for is the squeeze of this left ventricle. So on this image, we have the right ventricle, left ventricle, left atrium, and the aorta, mitral valve, and aortic valve. Typically, we're doing this examination to evaluate for uh, pericardial effusion. So we want to identify the pericardium. This is going to be this bright white line around the heart. What's important in this view is that you have it deep enough so that you can identify where the descending aorta is. The descending aorta is going to appear posterior to the left atrium and we're going to see it as a round circle. If the fluid is in the pericardium, it's going to be above this descending aorta. If it's a pleural effusion, it's going to be behind the descending aorta. So this is a very important landmark that you need to identify so you can clearly establish where the fluid is present. Another important area you have to identify to determine exactly where the pericardial effusion is, is the anterior aspect of the heart. You have to be careful when you evaluate this area because there could be a fat pad in this area that appears hypoechoic. So for it to be a true pericardial effusion, we want to see the fluid wrapping all the way around the heart to the posterior aspect. If it's just here in the anterior aspect, it's probably just a fat pad.